This man is the biggest threat to OpenAI. So we will train models that are very, very much larger than GPT-4 uh, before anybody else in the world. His name is Mustafa Suleiman, and he's the co-founder of two multi-billion dollar AI companies. But Mustafa isn't going just after OpenAI. He's going after Google too. We've learned to speak Google. No, like now that has to stop. That's over. That, if I was Google, I would be pretty worried. Recently, Mustafa spent over $1.3 billion on a new AI supercomputer. And thanks to his exclusive partnership with NVIDIA, he will have the hardware before OpenAI or any other competitor. Mustafa managed to secure some of the most powerful investors in the world, including Bill Gates, Eric Schmidt, NVIDIA, and Reid Hoffman. So if there's someone who can take OpenAI's number one spot, it's Mustafa Suleyma. On the surface, OpenAI might seem invincible. They've built the fastest growing product in history, and they have the backing of a trillion dollar corporation. However, a lot of people think that the downfall of OpenAI has already begun. In 2022, the company reported a loss of $540 million. Even today, OpenAI is spending around $700,000 every single day just to keep ChatGPT running. What's worse, if we look at the Google Trends chart, we can see that the hype and excitement is beginning to slow down. In fact, the traffic to ChatGPT's website has dropped for the third month in a row. Some people even began to speculate that ChatGPT is becoming worse. Why does that drift happen? People are talking about that with ChatGPT4, that results have deprecated. So I think with the ChatGPT thing, it's probably that they basically serve their best model, which mm. is expensive to serve, right? And then once people are coming back frequently, they'll use they'll serve a smaller model, <laughs> which ah. is cheaper. But this isn't just speculation. Researchers from Stanford and UC Berkeley found that GPT4 from June was actually worse than GPT4 from March. Sam Altman said multiple times that OpenAI is not currently training GPT5. That could turn out to be a major mistake. A mistake that's playing right into Mustafa's hand. There aren't many people in history who have built two multi-billion dollar startups back to back. But just like other tech giants, Mustafa was once a simple college dropout. In 2010, the field of AI was basically non-existent. People would look at you weird if you said the words neural network or AI. It was also just two years after the big stock market crash of 2008. So you had to be crazy to start an AI company. And that's exactly what Mustafa was about to do. I was starting to keep an eye on um, Facebook's rise. And I was like, this is incredible. Around the same time, Mustafa met Demis Hassabis. While they were playing poker, Demis explained the concept of artificial intelligence to Mustafa. Together, they decided to create DeepMind with the goal of replicating human intelligence. In other words, they wanted to create AGI. Something so impossible back then, it's like saying you're building a time machine. But Mustafa and Demis persisted. They operated in stealth mode, which means they didn't share anything with the public. We, I mean, we operated in stealth for most yeah. of our entire period, and we actually didn't even announce our investors. In 2013, however, DeepMind achieved its first major breakthrough. Using deep reinforcement learning, they've trained an AI to play old Atari games, such as Pong or Space Invaders. Little did Mustafa know that this seemingly insignificant AI made to play video games would completely change his life. You know, Larry Page had seen the demo and she just emailed us cold page at google.com and was like, mm. you know, you guys should come and be part of us. While getting a cold email from the founder of Google is amazing, what followed was even more mind blowing. If you're new to the channel, my name is David Andre and I make interesting videos like this one. So if you want to learn more about AI, please subscribe. Larry Page presented Mustafa and Demis with an offer they couldn't refuse. And Larry made us an incredible offer to be able to do that. We were acquired for $650 million, um, pre-revenue obviously. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a pretty great deal. $650 million for an AI company that doesn't make any money. Man, Larry Page really has balls. But not everybody was happy about this deal. At the time, uh, Google uh, had acquired DeepMind, and so Google and DeepMind together had about three quarters of all the uh, AI talent in the world. Elon Musk, just like Peter Field, was an early investor in DeepMind, but he had a different plan. Elon and Peter, all of our investors wanted us to stay independent. What was the reason though? Why did Elon Musk try so hard to prevent Google from buying DeepMind? Uh, Larry Page and I used to be close friends and I would yes. stay at his house in Palo Alto. While Elon was worried about AI safety, Larry didn't care. He wanted to create a super intelligent AI god. I said, well, what about, you know, who we're gonna make sure humanity's okay here. Um, uh, and then he called me a species. That's when Elon had enough. He called Peter Field and proposed an idea to start a new AI company 
one that could rival DeepMind. And Elon already had the name, it would be called OpenAI. But Mustafa wasn't worried. After all, they had the best AI researchers in the world. And now DeepMind gained access to Google's infinite money and their cutting edge supercomputers. Nobody was thinking about some small competing startup. Everyone was focused on DeepMind and the incredible things they were doing. The first success was using AI to optimize Google's data centers, which saved the company millions. But DeepMind's greatest achievement was right around the corner. In 2016, Mustafa and the team created AlphaGo, an AI system trained to play the ancient Chinese game of Go. The team at DeepMind challenged the world's best Go player and not only did the AI win, it completely smoked him, winning four out of the five games. AlphaGo was by far the biggest thing that ever happened in the AI field. Overnight, DeepMind became one of the most respected companies in the world. Something that couldn't be said for this failing San Francisco startup. However, OpenAI was patient. Sam Altman knew that his time would come. Two years after AlphaGo, DeepMind had another major success. AlphaFold could predict the shape of proteins, which has massive implications in the healthcare industry. While it seemed that DeepMind was on top of the world, inside of the company, things weren't looking so good. After the Google acquisition, the team at DeepMind wanted to be autonomous, but Larry Page wanted them to merge with other AI teams within Google. This created a bunch of conflict. On top of that, Mustafa Suleiman was accused of having an aggressive management style. Apparently, he was too strict with his employees, pushing them too hard. Because of this, Mustafa left DeepMind in 2019. After taking a few months off, he joined Google as the vice president of AI product management. However, things didn't get any better. I was there at Google and working on the Lambda team, right? So mm. that I spent a year and a half working on that team and we basically had ChatGPT before ChatGPT. It was yeah. incredible. Mustafa, with other AI researchers, tried to convince Google to launch some of the AI products they had. However, Google was too careful. Because of this, AI talent began leaving the company. Every single person behind the famous attention is all you need paper ended up leaving Google. Um, I do think they have a bit of a innovator's dilemma problem. To put it simply, Google was scared to release any new AI products. Especially when these new products include AI chatbots that directly compete against Google search. This was extremely painful for Mustafa. Imagine spending years of your life creating a new technology that could change the world only for it to be shelved. To add fuel to the fire, the once small startup OpenAI was releasing new discoveries and breakthroughs left and right. In 2019, they released GPT-2, which shocked the AI community. Even the godfather of AI was impressed. GPT-2, which was one of the earlier language models, right amazed me. In the same year, Microsoft invested one billion dollars into OpenAI. All of this was happening while Mustafa was stuck at Google, watching as OpenAI slowly took the number one spot away from DeepMind. I can only imagine how frustrating that must have been. A year later, in 2020, OpenAI made another huge leap with the release of GPT-3. This caused Microsoft to put another two billion into OpenAI. The AI field has turned into a fighting ground for big tech. Google and DeepMind versus Microsoft and OpenAI. And everyone knew that Microsoft was winning. But Mustafa Suleiman isn't the kind of person to just stand on the sidelines and watch. And so after eight long years, he decided to leave Google. It was time for OpenAI to have some competition. Mustafa joined forces with Reid Hoffman, the creator of LinkedIn, and started a new company, Inflection AI. Uh, and then of course, Reid Hoffman, who's been my uh, one of my closest friends, for like 10 years and we've always talked about starting something together and I was like this is the obvious thing now is the time for sure. A few months later the first wave of investments poured in. Bill Gates, Greylock, Eric Schmidt, Microsoft, Demis Asabis and even Will I Am. Gotta get dead. In total, Inflection has raised $225 million in the first round of funding. And Mustafa used that money to hire a team of killers. We were extremely focused on hiring the best PhDs and postdocs, actually. And I've carried that through to how I hire Inflection. But Mustafa was only getting started. He doesn't want Inflection to be yet another AI startup. He wants to be at the top. And his next move shocked everybody. On June 29th, 2023, Inflection AI announced a second round of funding. 
spending 1.3 billion dollars. Instead of playing it safe and spending that money over a few years, Mustafa took the billion and instantly purchased 22,000 GPUs from Nvidia. This means that Inflection is building the largest AI cluster in the world, bigger than Meta, bigger than Apple, bigger than Google and bigger than OpenAI. And what Mustafa is planning to do with this computer is nothing short of insane. Just look at his latest product, Pi, a free AI chatbot that's already better than GPT 3.5, which is the free version of ChatGPT. However, thanks to his giant supercomputer, Mustafa's next language model will be significantly better than even the best AI model of today, GPT 4. This new language model will finish training in early 2024, and once Inflection updates Pi and gives it access to the internet, all of us will quickly stop using Google. Google is already a conversation, it's just an appallingly painful one. But you don't have to be Mustafa Suleiman to benefit from the AI revolution. If you are ambitious, if you can adapt quickly, and if you start taking AI seriously, you have the potential to not only change your life, but to change the world. It really is going to be about how hungry and dynamic you are as an individual. individual.